Hi, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. Today we're going to be talking about treasury bills. Should you be buying treasury bills or treasury notes? At first glance, a treasury note might seem like a better purchase sometimes, but we're going to look at it from the current rate and then we're going to look at it over time to get a better feel which one might be the better choice. We're going to introduce the concept of interest rate risk and then we'll end the discussion by talking about what the future plans are for the Fed and how that might make your decision in terms of buying a treasury note or a treasury bill. So let's get started. If you ever want to get the current rates for treasury notes, treasury bills, and treasury bonds, you can always go to Treasury Direct. And they have a page there that says announcements, data, and results, and they'll give you the 20 most recent auction results. What I have here on the left is the auction results for treasury notes. What I have here on the right are the auction results for treasury bills. We're going to just take a quick peek here. We'll notice that if we're looking at the yield, the yield's what we're interested on on notes, that most of these yields are in the high 3s to 4% range. If we look over here at the treasury bills, we'll notice that uh, many of these yields are in the mid to high 3s with some of them in the 4% uh, range. So one might initially think, well, treasury notes seem like they might be doing better, but we're gonna examine this a little more closely. What I did with this Microsoft Excel spreadsheet is just take all of that data from the four week up to the 52 week treasury bill and from the two year treasury note to the 10 year treasury note and put it in a more easily readable format so that we can see how the prices have changed of each as the calendar year has progressed. Now we're going to take a look at that data using a chart in PowerPoint so that we can get a better idea of how these rates have been doing over time. Along the vertical axis there, we will have either the interest rate or the yield, depending on whether we're talking about a treasury bill or a treasury note. Along the bottom, I've plotted out the dates. We'll go ahead and start with the four week, and then we will add in the eight, the 13, the 17, the 26 week, and the 52 week treasury bills. Right away, we'll see that each of these are increasing over time, but we'll also see something very important. And that is that as time has been going on, the value of the lesser treasury bills eventually reaches and surpasses the value of the earlier long-term treasury bills. So as an example, we'll look at the 52-week treasury bill back on October 11th. It was just right around 4.15%. But if we advance just a month or so, even if we look at the 17-week Treasury bill, we'll see that it exceeds the 52-week Treasury bill from earlier by a significant amount. In fact, even the 8-week Treasury bill is starting to approach that of the earlier 52-week Treasury bill from just about one month earlier. We'll continue on now with the Treasury notes. We'll bring in the 2-year, the 3-year, the 5-year, the seven year and the 10 year. Now we notice something interesting here and that is that the two year treasury note is yielding more than the 10 year treasury note. We call that a yield curve inversion where the difference between the 10 year treasury note and the two year treasury note that spread there becomes negative. Now we're going to do that same comparison that we did earlier between treasury bills and do that with treasury notes versus treasury bills. So we'll go ahead and take the highest yielding treasury note right now, which is the two year treasury note. That's this line here. And we're gonna compare that to the highest yielding one year treasury bill or 52 week treasury bill. That's that green line right here. So we'll see that initially that two-year treasury note is greater than the 52-week treasury bill. In fact, if we go back here to October 11th, the two-year treasury note, the most recent one was on October 1st, and it went for more than 4.15%, and the 52-week treasury bill was a little less than 4.15%. However, we fast forward just about a month, and we'll see that the 52-week treasury bill now outpaces the most recent two-year treasury note. In fact, if we compare the 17-week treasury note, we'll see that its most recent price here on October 22nd is greater than the two-year treasury note was back on October 1st. So just six weeks later, 
the 17-week Treasury bill has a higher rate of return than the two-year Treasury note. So what these graphs introduce is the concept of interest rate risk. Interest rate risk is the risk that investments that are already held will lose market value if new investments with higher interest rates enter the market. Now, interest rate risk affects the value of bonds far more than it directly affects stocks. Now, there's two ways to look at interest rate risk. One is to imagine that you've purchased a bond for a set price, $5,000 bond at 3%, which would give you $150 a year of interest. However, when interest rates go up, the value of that bond goes down. Why is that? Well, because now buyers or investors could purchase a bond at, say, 4%, and the value of your 3% bond goes down. So that's one way to look at interest rate risk. Another way to look at interest rate risk, though, is to tie it to the maturity of the treasury bill, treasury bond, treasury note, or any type of bond, actually. Those types of investment vehicles that have longer maturities as interest rates rise, those shorter maturity date interest vehicles will catch and surpass the rate of return for bonds purchased earlier. And this graph is a very nice example on multiple levels of how a treasury note or treasury bill purchased even just six to eight weeks ago has a lower rate of return than a shorter duration bill or note purchased in the more recent weeks. Now, this is all nice to know, but there's still one question to ask, and that is, what can we expect for the future? Well, this is a nice article taken from the PBS NewsHour website where they discussed some comments made by the St. Louis Fed President James Bullard. The article goes on to say that Mr. Bullard said that the Federal Reserve may have to raise its benchmark interest rate much higher than it's previously projected to get inflation under control. Now, he's not the only one saying that the federal funds rate will be increasing. The article goes on to say that Bullard's remarks followed speeches by other Fed officials in recent days that suggested they see only limited progress at most in their use of steadily higher interest rates to fight inflation. So right now we're looking at a federal funds rate of 3.75% to 4%. That's up from almost zero, though, back in March of 2022. Mr. Bullard went on to say that the rate may need to rise to a level of between 5%, that wouldn't be so bad based on where we're at, up to a level of 7% in order to quash inflation. Now, even the Fed Vice Chair, Lael Brennard, who is a bit more dovish, meaning that she is inclined towards lower interest rates and more growth and jobs creation, she had this to say that the central bank would need to move further into restrictive territory. Now, some people have gotten excited because they're predicting that the Fed will only raise the federal funds rate by 50 basis points in December rather than the 75 basis points that they have been doing recently. However, just remember that even though the rate of increase may be slowing, it's still increasing, and the intent is to continue to increase it beyond even what they will do in December, potentially to as high as 7%. So, knowing that the Fed will still be increasing rates out into the future, what do I think about Treasury bills versus Treasury notes? So, who's the winner? In my opinion, it's the Treasury bill. We've seen that the 52-week Treasury bill, its latest results were better than the latest results for the two-year Treasury note. And we also saw that even the 17-week Treasury bill is very close to outreturning the two-year treasury note and certainly is outreturning the two-year treasury notes that were sold back in September. If this information was helpful for you, please give us a thumbs up and share this kind of information with a young person in your life. Help young people learn to invest. Man, we can really improve their future by getting them investing now. Until next time, enjoy your investing.